Rodriguez with the Squinting Service Team, and today we're going to talk about installing a single-headed active co-pilot on an HD conveyor. So before you get started installing your system, there's going to be a few things that you want to consider. Uh, first and foremost, you want to make sure you have an accessible source and a reliably grounded source of power. The other thing you want to look at is um, accessibility to the system itself for the operator. Right. Can the operator access the system, get to the controller, perform maintenance on the printhead when needed? You want to look for something that is uh, not going to have a whole lot of vibration, and you want something that's going to be steady. So one of these EC conveyors is actually kind of perfect for it. So there are multiple ways to mount your system, whether it be a floor mount stand or a conveyor mount similar to this. Today we're using a single-headed conveyor mount that's actually going to mount directly onto the side wall of the conveyor. Um, this is going to be enough to hold your whole system, print head and uh, controller and everything else needed. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and mount the controller onto this black L bracket here. Um, one of the other things that you want to consider before we start actually mounting the print heads and the controllers is going to be the direction of the flow of the conveyor. You're always going to want the photo cell to be pointing upstream. That should be the first thing the product passes before the printhead one. So we've got our printhead bracket mounted on this side of the bracket here. This is where we'll be installing the printhead. The photo line will be on this side. We'll go ahead and put the controller here, give it a little bit of room here and accessibility. So in order to do that, you'll see there are two mounting holes right here. We're gonna take those and line them up with the bracket right here. Now, the bracket on the top is slotted so we can kind of slide it around how we need to to fit the application. Some places may be a little bit tight. We could turn it different directions, different angles. Same thing with the L bracket as well. So, what I like to do is get one started. Just like so and find the other one start that one now all the bolts that we're going to be using and tightening here are going to use a five millimeter allen wrench that we could tighten up so the next step now is going to be to install the printhead now before we can actually attach the printhead to the the beam here we're going to need to install one of our mounting brackets here. Now this mounting bracket will let us print downwards or upright. It can also let you rotate here if you have the proper fitting here. So for now, we're just gonna mount and line up the two holes here, the two holes here, okay? And we'll do that like this. All right, once those are mounted, you can go ahead and flatten this bracket out, like so. This is your desired effect right now. We have our T-nuts here, we have our photocell bracket that you can see over here, and we're gonna go ahead and slide it on the pole. All right, so now to slide it on here, we're just gonna have to line up our T-nuts so that they're pointed in the right direction, and just use them and guide them in to the extrusion. like so. Once you have them in a spot that you're comfortable with, happy with, you can go ahead and tighten it down slightly. Keeping in mind that we are gonna have to make some adjustments as we start testing on the product. Next, we're gonna go ahead and connect our data cable, this DVI-I data cable. So there's an orientation to the, the ends here, you'll notice. 
that'll match up on either end of the controller or the print head. So we'll go ahead and start at the print head. We'll seat that in there and then just hand tighten these. So next, what we're going to want to do is find print head one. It's important to remember that whenever you're setting up a single headed system, that first head needs to be plugged in to print head one. That and tighten this up as well. There. Next, we're going to be installing the photo eye. As I mentioned earlier, there's a photo eye bracket that will mount right onto the bottom mount of the print head right there. So we're going to use that, slide the photo eye in, and tighten it up into place. And again, you just want a snug fit here so it doesn't bounce off. So if, you, if your application needs uh, photo eye and uh, encoder, which this one is gonna use, you're gonna wanna make sure you have a Y splitter component like this. You'll be able to plug in both your encoder and your photo eye into the single jack here. So we'll install our Y splitter here into the import on the controller. So now you want to take your other end of your photo cell that we just installed on the printhead and find any one of the ports and plug it in. Next here is uh, our encoder. Now the encoder is there to ensure that we provide a constant speed to the controller. Encoders are super important when you're doing stuff like barcoding so that you're not having a, uh, a jump in the print. Also for applications that have like a, a start and stop, intermittent start and stops, encoders are, are almost necessary for that. So what you wanna do is find a spot either on the belt or whatever's driving the belt and install the encoder so that it has contact with it. Now the, con the, the encoders are spring loaded and that adjustment is made right here on the bottom, okay? So, Typically, you want your encoder to be as close to the print system as possible so that it provides an accurate assessment of the speed. So the encoder connector is another RJ12, just like the photo eye. And what you want to do is just kind of uh, route it over to your system underneath the conveyor if you can. So I've routed my encoder cable. I'll go ahead and find my Y splitter and plug that in. Now again, it doesn't matter A or B as long as they're both connected. Once we've got everything mounted, plugged in, and ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and take our power line and plug that in directly to our controller. Now the controller will provide power for everything that we're using. So once you're ready to start testing, we'll go ahead and power it on. So once you've completed your preliminary uh, mounting, everything's plugged in and ready to rock, you're gonna to wanna to make your final adjustments for your height and your, your distance to your product. In order to do that with this bracket, we've got two, uh, two knobs here that we can adjust. This one, if we loosen this up, we'll slide our pinhead in or out. And this one will go up and down. So what we'll do is, and before you make any of adjustments and you have power on here, you're gonna wanna make sure you turn the photo cell off. There's an option on the controller here. It'll tell you to print, start, or stop. This will allow you to make adjustments with the power on. So how you know the system's able and ready to accept a trigger is this little icon down here it says printing. Now, if I wanna do some maintenance or make adjustments, I'm gonna go up to the top and hit stop. Now you'll notice it says not printing. So any triggers or anything blocking the photo eye will not result in a print at this moment. So once you've completed your preliminary mounting and you're ready to make uh, some final adjustments, you've already shut off your photo cell, we're gonna use these two knobs to position our head onto where we want it to print on the box. So 
First one we're going to do here is we're going to drop our height down so that it's at a desirable position. Loosen that up. Line that up with the box or the product that you're wanting to print. And tighten that up. Now, what you'll see here is there's a great deal of distance between the print head and the substrate that we're going to be printing on. The ideal distance is about an eighth of an inch. Right about there. Now, if you start to get farther away from an eighth of an inch, then your print quality starts to degrade. Now the next thing we want to do is actually measure the distance between the center of the photo eye and our print engine on whatever print head we're using. So for right now, what we're going to do is use this tape measure and I'm going to line it up to the print engine there and kind of gauge where the center of the photo cell is. From here, it's roughly about two and a quarter inches. So once we have everything mounted, we're able now to tell it how we want it to print. In order to set up those parameters, we're going to want to go to this icon here. Now the most important things to tell the controller are going to be the direction that the product is flowing, the speed that the product is going, the distance from the head to the photo cell, as well as the encoder divider. We'll start here. You'll see on this page we have our line speed and our ability to turn our encoder on or off. Right now it's at off, so we'll go ahead and select on and hit apply. Once you get that green check here, you're good to go. We'll back out. I'll we'll go to the next icon here. This is our distance from head to trigger. What you'll see is your minimum and your maximum amount on either end. The number in the middle displays what you're set at currently. So you can use your finger and drag it into position as close as you can, and then use the plus and minuses until you get even closer. There. Once I'm satisfied, I'll go ahead and apply again. Now we need to tell it the direction it's going. Left to right, right to left. We're going this way. Now lastly, we just want to make sure that our DPI is set to 205 here. This will ensure that what we make in Orion is going to look similar to what we end up printing on the box. That divider is going to be 13. Hit apply. And now we're able to go back to our home screen. So since we're just starting off, we're going to go ahead and use the default message. Each controller that gets shipped out of here will have this message installed on it so that you can at least test the print before you go ahead and start making your messages on Orion. So for right now, before we get to that point, we gotta go ahead and prime up our printhead. Once you're ready to commission your printhead, you're gonna to wanna to to go ahead and take your ink cartridge. It comes in a bag just like this. And you're gonna to wanna to remove that from the bag. And you're also gonna to wanna to remove this protective cover here. Once you have that out of the way, we'll go ahead and slide it in and insert it. Now what you're looking for is a snap and a nice fit here, not something like this, okay? You want it all the way in, seated properly. So now that our cartridge is in place, we're gonna take our non-abrasive lid-free wipes. And I like to place one down underneath the print head and take another and fold it up into a quarter. What I'll do is line it up at the bottom of the print engine and use the purge button on the back of the print head. Now when you're priming up a print head for the first time, holding down this button 
um, you're going to want to hold it down for 30 to 40 seconds. That's going to give you a good, proper prime. What we're looking for is to eliminate any air bubbles that could be in there, especially if it's new, and any shipping or storage solution that may be in there. Now, once I'm satisfied with the prime, I'll go ahead and take that wipe and just gently wipe away any of the excess ink on the side here. I'm trying to be careful not to touch the actual laminate in the print engine there. We want to avoid contact. So now that we're primed up, we've got our settings in place, we're ready to go ahead and do a couple of print tests. Before you do that though, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you turn your print back on. So find your green start button, select it, make sure it says printing on the corner, and you should be ready to go and test it. So now we've completed our test print. At this point, you're actually able to go ahead and go to Orion and build your message for your application. There'll be more on that later. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you are needing more technical information, you can find us on YouTube or elsewhere on the web. Thanks for watching.